This is QTV News and I am Jenna Bosanko. Coming up. A gruesome sight greeted the residents of Medina Jiki. They awoke to find 15 cattle slaughtered and left scattered in a field. Early marriage, almost always first, remains a scourge in society. One project takes a novel approach to rescuing young girls from this menace. Tree planting continues to be a proven method of trying to redress the effects of climate change. Without proper statistical data, development cannot take place as part of government's efforts to address various development challenges and commitments. The Bureau of Statistics hosted a launch event to outline some of the priority areas. Those are our top stories and now the news in detail. Stay with us. Fifteen herd of cattle worth around $300,000 were reportedly killed by unidentified person or persons in Medina Jiki hours after the death of their owner. Maria Tussar has the rest of that story. Following the mass killing of 15 cattle on Thursday by unidentified person or persons in Medina Jiki, the president of the National Livestock Owners Association paid a visit to the family, whose late father owned the cattle, to confirm the news. Basing his judgment on what he saw, he summarized that the person who killed this cattle must have used a very sharp object. Ibrahim Ojalo, the president of the National Livestock Owners Association, during an interview with QTV, gave an account of the facts as he understood them. This past Wednesday, we received a call. Uh, the animals killed in Madina Jigi. Uh, Madina Jigi is in Sierra uh, South. That's around Fula, uh, Fula, uh, Fuladu East. Uh, we visited the scene and then find out the farmer. We, the farmers took us to the place and we find 15 animals we are killed on the spot during that night. So the cause of the dead we couldn't understand. But all that we can uh, justify that the animals we are killed because we look at them and the livestock assistants also were there. But when they check at the back of the animal, there was a hole. So we thought that they used a hammer to beat the animal so that this thing can penetrate to kill the animal. Cattle owners in the provincial Gambia, especially CRR, have been battling with cattle wrestlers. And a lot of theft cases have been recorded, says Adam Abba, second vice president of the association. While you complain, CRR is legi, Bunko Japan is legi, Magistri is not good the tribal magistrate is more good for you. If you are not good for our major problem in CRR is we have a travel magistrate that comes and go if a thief is caught. In the absence of a magistrate, the thief cannot be prosecuted and will be bailed after 72 hours, leading to other theft cases. The government needs to help us solve this issue, as most of the cattle wrestlers are Senegalese, and they won't practice such acts in their country because if they are caught, they will serve five-year jail terms. And in the Gambia, they easily get away with such acts. He appeals to the government to take necessary action to address such cases, as it is very unfair for someone to struggle and raise livestock only to see them killed all in a day or stolen. The police have assured QTV that their investigations are ongoing to make sure the perpetrators are brought to justice. For QTV News, I am Maria Tussar. There is a growing basketball academy in Soma. The academy is founded by Alassane Ba, a native of Soma, who felt that young girls are mostly encouraged to get married at an early age rather than being engaged in more productive activities. I recently visited Soma and I had the privilege to talk to their founder, a player, as well as the team coach. Let's take a listen. The basketball academy comprises both male and female players but concentrates more on the girls as they are more vulnerable, especially in relation to being pressured into early marriage. According to the International Women's Health Coalition, child marriage effectively ends a girl's childhood, curtails her education, minimizes her economic opportunities, increases her risk of domestic violence, and puts her at risk for early, frequent, and very high risk of pregnancies. According to the numerous negative effects of early marriage, Alassane Ba was motivated to start the basketball academy. Because we felt uh, the girls keep quiet a lot. You know, I always tell people uh, uh, to, when you are harassed, it's not, uh, it's not, you don't have to wait for people to believe you to start saying it. 
So we try to educate them on how can they start speaking their mind because we know this world is hard to trust again a, a person, you know. We know the celebrities, those who are well known in, in the world, who can just abuse anybody. But when they are young, they can start speaking on their own, when they can come together, talk about issues that really affects them, then there is hope for the future that uh, most women will not be abused like what we are seeing today uh, uh, in our communities. Alassane is absolutely right. Females who play sports have higher levels of confidence and self-esteem and lower levels of depression. Let's say sports helps young girls say no or yes depending on what they want. Salima Tujalo spoke to us about her motivation. And what inspired me to join this gym is I see to read that the game is very nice and the game is also civilized and important. Yeah. And I get the benefit. Like last year we went to Combo, Sirikunda West. We have the clinic with those people. So the time we finish the clinic the clinic, they they give me so. The coach of the basketball team, Ibrahim Anjai, said he is confident that if the team gets the required support, the team, which comprises strong and determined youngsters, can reach a higher level in the game as a team. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basonko. They definitely need support. Let's fight global warming and make Gambia green again are the slogans of the Bulok Kapunga Youth Development Association as they embark on a massive tree planting exercise. Our reporter Mamud Gajiga took part in the process and he files in this report. Over 4,000 seedlings were planted in Fonyi Bulok Community Forest on Saturday. These include three species such as oak, malina and cashew. The aim is to preserve the forest cover and fight the menace of global warming which has far-reaching consequences. Human activities such as bushfires, loggings and charcoal making can lead to deforestation. Uh, we are here today to fight against climate change and we are here also to protect our forest for tomorrow because we can see the impact of climate change. So we are here to plant trees for our future generation. And most of the times we lack rain, especially this year, there is no enough rain. So I think um, planting trees or too much trees and to uh, stop deforestation and improve on afforestation will increase the rain and will help us uh, improve on our crop yields annually. A cross section of the community, from the youth, elderly and the very young, all took part in the exercise. They were joined by partners such as Green Up Gambia, the National Youth Council, Global Youth Innovative Network, Mama Tamba Youth Association and Bamboo Foundation. Idris Njai, Executive Director of Gene Gambia, says planting trees will have a significant impact in tackling climate change. We even looked at our this year's rainfall, uh, it has been almost uh, 25 days or more than 25 days we have not been receiving more than 52 mm. So basically this can tell us that uh, climate change is real, global warming is real, and we the young people should contribute to you know, uh, overcome climate change or to address the issues of climate change as well as global warming. Tamba Jambe is an environmental advocate who came from the North Bank region to support the initiative by donating seedlings. With almost about 200 seedlings and I want to bring it in person and also, also participate because the country belongs to us, all of us. So as a youth we should try to see each other as one, fam one people one from one family and we try to make sure that we take care of our own environment. So this is why I also came to, to make sure to support them and also to participate in, the, in this tree, tree planting exercise. Sunkari Baji, the National Assembly member for Fonyi Brefet constituency, says their community used to have a thick forest a few years ago. But over time, that has changed. Forestation, bad human habits, all our trees uh, have uh, been uh, brought down, especially there are certain three species which are also been, at the verge of being uh, distinct called the, the Chenon and other trees are, are going out. So if they take on themselves to bring that, uh, those three, uh, three species back to uh, uh, for benefit and in particular uh, block, uh, block uh, village, that's a good initiative and I want to thank them very much indeed. Planting trees to preserve the forest cover. Will you not be ashamed 
to go to the bush and start cutting the trees again because this is going to cause climate change. It is going to cause global warming. It's a reality, except if you are in denial. Here in Block, I am Omudu Kajaka for QTV News. Let's make Gambia green again. We will now take a short commercial break. When we return, the news continues. Stay tuned. Why wouldn't you? When you get to enjoy a massive 50% reduction on your pay-as-you-go data tariff. You know you get to enjoy such amazing discounts with QCell's fantastic network. Enjoy our reduced pay-as-you-go data tariff every day from 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. No subscription, no validity period. Simply recharge your account and off you go. QCell, the Gambia's quality network. It is the new era in broadcasting. We showed it to you with our continuously improving content with thousands of viewers around the world. Now, how do you take advantage of our existing and constantly increasing viewership? Advertise with QTV and reach a large audience. Call us on 32444444 or email marketing at qtv.gm. Follow us on YouTube Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, QTV Gambia. QTV, a new era in broadcasting. Welcome back from that short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV News. The Gambia Bureau of Statistics, in collaboration with UNICEF, on Monday held the official launch of the Gambia Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey 6. The event was attended by senior government officials, members of the UN systems in the country, and representatives of youth and women's group. And Suman Esonyasi was there, and he files in this report. In his welcoming statement, Chairman of the Gambia Statistics Council, Babu Karsar, said the publication of this survey will help government understand the situation of women and children in the country, adding that multiple indicator cluster surveys are important to the realization of the MDGs and NDP targets. He also said that the National Statistics Council is alert to the fact that policy targets might remain elusive without such data. We'll continue to play its advisory role to the national statistical system on issues of strategic importance to the development and use of official statistics. We will ensure that the right policies are created for the National Statistical System in general and the Gambia Bureau of Statistics in particular to produce, disseminate reliable and timely relevant statistics. For her part, the Minister of Women, Children and Social Welfare, Fatou Kinte, said MIX is a major data source of about 27 SDG indicators and provides data relevant to track some of the indicators of the National Development Plan, particularly those to be acquired through household service. The mixed six result has provided information critical for programming, policy formulation and monitoring. The findings revealed an overall improvement, particularly areas related to women and children and those factors affecting their welfare. Speaking earlier, the UNICEF country representative Sandra Latuf said it is very fitting that at this juncture in Gambia's political history and socio-economic transformation. It leads efforts to generate accurate, timely data to measure its progress. We hope that the partnership and collaboration will continue in data for development, especially as related to the children and women of the Gambia, and that this data will facilitate evidence-based discussion to promote the children's rights in the country. I challenge everyone here to closely review the document and the fighting, not the progress and the disparity, and equality among sex, age, groups, and region. In a statement read by his deputy, Aliu Saho, the Statistician General of the Gambia Bureau of Statistics, highlighted the need to supplement mixed data to ensure a more credible and legitimate measure of progress towards the realization of NDP's goals, AU Agenda 2063 and Global Development Agenda 2030. Ansumana Esonyasi for KTV News. Now to another story on tree planting. Sinta Development Project embarked on a mangrove tree planting exercise where over 20,000 mangrove snaplings were planted. Funded by the U.S. Embassy, the project aims to preserve vulnerable coastal areas and communities whilst resiliently fighting against climate change. Aisha Jain has the rest of that story. 
Many years ago, along the Bintam Bolong, beautiful mangrove forests blooming with a vibrant and bountiful ecosystem could be observed reaching over 20 meters in height, attracting tourists from around the world. Mangrove forests function as an essential habitat, spawning grounds, nurseries and nutrients for thriving species such as birds, fish, crabs, shellfish, monkeys, hippos and crocodiles. Today, mangrove forests have faced severe degradation due to climate change, salt intrusion and human activity. Community Action Platform on Environment and Development, CAPED, in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy, have joined forces in the battle against climate change. Momoduba, founder and executive director of CAPED, speaks at length on the importance of the mangrove restoration exercise for coastal communities. I started this project in 2009. In 2009, um, CAPED was uh, registered. We had community volunteers from Sinted, that is how we started it. But we did intervention in, in, in many villages, in Kamanka, in Kalaji, in Sinted, and in Kiang Sankandi, most recently in Iliasa in the North Bank region. So we hope to extend our hands into different communities. Like the objective everywhere is the same, to restore the damaged ecosystem, help fishermen, get back to their old trade as a form of entrepreneurship because that will also be a form of job creation to the people. A fisherman once said, if there are no mangrove forests, then the sea will have no meaning. It is like having a tree with no roots, for the mangroves are the roots of the sea. Fisherman Modula Mintamba says mangroves are vital in fish breeding. He explains his plight in commercial fishing over the years and commends the use of Sintet for their active participation in the exercise. Before, the way I caught fish is very different from today. Three years ago, we decided to plant mangroves and notice that whenever we are out fishing, we have a good catch. We are very happy about the coming of our guests because their visit is of great importance as it enables us to come up with strategies to safeguard our environment. Esa Jalo, a volunteer, also shares his take on the exercise. Like I said, the environment is everybody's business. You don't think that it is not in my area so it doesn't affect me. What affects somebody in the hinterland will affect somebody um, in the urban area. So helping to do this um, in terms of um, uh, recovering our, our forest is very, very important. And I think it's important for our young generation because a lot of things are being destroyed. Um, uh, the, the future generation would not have the opportunity to have um, uh, the environment that they have right to. The mangrove tree planting initiative started in 2009 has seen the replanting of at least 3 million red mangrove saplings, creating up to 5 kilometers of mangrove forests along the river, protecting communities such as Kalaji, Kangmanka, Kiankasan, and now Sintet. However, there is still more work to be done. Momoduba further urges the Gambian government to accelerate efforts in relation to environmental protection. For QTV News, I am Aisha Jain. Sheikh Abdelaja Charitable Foundation has inaugurated boreholes for three villages in the Central River region last Saturday. Apart from their medical interventions across the country, the foundation continues to roll out water projects for less privileged Gambians. Momodulam Choi has the rest of that story. Access to clean drinking water has been a problem for some rural dwellers for many years. Successive governments seem to have been concentrating its water projects, mostly in the urban areas, thereby leaving rural communities to rely on wells or hand pumps to fulfill their water needs. However, to improve living conditions of less privileged rural people, the Sheikh Abdullah Just Charitable Foundation has recently extended its support to three more villages, namely Samatako, Santantu Bubu and Santantu Maudo. The long struggle of villagers for water, coupled with what they report as fights and quarrels among women in the process of fetching water, is expected to be a thing of the past, thanks to the up and running water facilities brought to their communities by Sir Abdullah Jah Charitable Foundation. Local government officials and beneficiaries took turn to express what the development means for their lives. We cannot thank the donors enough. What we can say is that we are so grateful because we, the women, would have trekked long distances to fetch drinking water. 
we would have to wake up at 5 a.m. and still be fetching water by 10 to 11 a.m. But with this support, our water problems are solved. I thank the donors for their support. Women really suffered before to fetch water. In fact, they would even fight each other in the process of drawing water. This project, therefore, will solve such problems now. Eleven taps are fixed around the village of Sambatako, which has a population of close to 2,000 people with 44 compounds. And the two other small and close villages, Santanto Mauda and Santanto Bubu, are to share 12 taps. Each of the two boreholes for the three facilities has a daily output of 70,000 litres. Easy access to clean drinking water contributes to people's health. Fabakari Taraware has been volunteering with the organization for more than a decade. He volunteers in the organization's mobile medical caravan and he tells us the importance of clean water in the life of people. Water is next to only oxygen um, in, in our lives. So without um, just like oxygen, without water, we will not be able to survive. And without clean water, um, we, it is impossible for us to have uh, a good health. The residents of the three villages have set up committees which will serve as custodians of the water facilities for sustenance. With bank accounts open, they will be collecting monthly contributions from village residents, which will be used for maintenance of the facilities whenever needed. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony was the deputy governor of the Central River region. He hailed the donors for the initiative and advised villagers to take care of the facilities. I wish to thank the community of Sare Sambatako, through the alcalo, through the elders, through the youth, through the women, through the BDC. For their coming, for their attention, and uh, and want to once more plead with them to make this their own project. This is their own water supply facility. This is their responsibility to ensure that it is properly taken care of. Apart from providing water facilities to rural communities, Say Abdullah Jah Charity Foundation has been building the capacity of medical personnel, and so far, through mobile medical caravan clinics provided free medical support to at least 37,000 patients. Mamad Lam in Choi for QTV. And in sports, Gambia's track queen, Gina Bass, who won gold at recently concluded All-Africa Games, held in Casablanca, Morocco, today arrived in the country to a welcome by officials of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Gambia Athletics Association, family members and fans. The newly crowned best 200-meter female athlete also spoke to the media shortly after her arrival at the Banjul International Airport. Here is an excerpt. Yeah, I'm really happy, uh, but because before me winning the gold medal, the team have supported me, so that, that's why I win the gold medal, because with their support, that's why I, 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 I'm able to win the gold medal. It's not an easy thing to run in with an African champion and silver medalist in the World Games, so it was not an easy task, but with God's help and the... Gambia Olympic Community, and I am able to make it with my team. You finished second in the 100 meters silver medal, just about three seconds behind Talu. When you came into the 200 meters, what kept you going? Because I know that it's my event, because I'm faster in 100, uh, 200 than 100. So uh, if uh, it's only three milliseconds that I is between me and her, and I know that 200, I, if I push hard, Okay. Now you're an African champion. The whole Gambia is celebrating you. You have done what no other athlete has done in the past. Can you describe for us the feeling right now? Yeah, it's not an easy thing. Everything is all about training and focus. Because anything that your coach tell you, and if you do it, you will see the results after. So some people tell me like sometimes I'm useless because if I'm going to training, they will say, sometimes even if it is training, I used to go for training, they used to tell me, don't you have something else to do? I tell them because it's my career, so I need to go for it. Um, 
this is certainly the beginning of more success for Gina Bass on the tracks and of course the other Gambian athletes. You have won the uh, Islamic uh, Games gold medal, now you are an African champion in 200 meters. The World Championship is coming, the Olympic is coming, Gina is just 24. And what should we expect from Gina in the long run? That is left to God now because I'm training hard but with my, uh, the support of my country and my training partners, everything is going to go well. Well, congratulations to Gina Bass. Before we end this news bulletin, let's recap our main headlines. A gruesome sight greeted the residents of Medina Jiki. They awoke to find 15 cattle slaughtered and left scattered in a field. Early marriage, almost always first, remains a scourge in society. One project takes a novel approach to rescuing young girls from this menace. Tree planting continues to be a proven method of trying to redress the effects of climate change. Without proper statistical data, development cannot take place as part of government's efforts to address various development challenges and commitments. The Bureau of Statistics hosted a launch event to outline some of the priority areas. That is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Do join us tomorrow, same time for more news. Do stay tuned for more interesting programs and thank you for your company.